Hello and welcome back to another guide to Check the Lines 3. My name is Saiken and today we're going to have the second part of the Mercenary Review Guide. Despite my efforts of making it concise and quick, the first one would have been too long for just one guide. So the first one really covered the basics of recruiting mercs at the beginning as well as the IMP. And today we're just going to really quickly go through Veteran, Elite and Legendary tier and mostly focus on special abilities of the respective mercs. So let's go up just one by one. We're starting at Veteran tier. Fidel as an explosive expert, generally good character, has absolutely fantastic explosive and marksman stat and his mobile toss of two grenades is just great. He is an expensive character for that tier though, costing as on, almost as much as legendary characters. So good character but quite costly moving on to raven so i would give him potentially a tier because he's actually a good character raven as a sniper uh, is fantastic uh, she sets overwatch and all uh, targets uh, that she overwatches are marked therefore she will crit a very often and therefore she could theoretically skill into uh, the agility uh, perks for multiple um, crits that would then give her even further inspiration. So there are build options around her. She comes as a very good package with high marksmanship and good physical stats. So definitely A rating as well. Which brings us to Thor, um, who comes with the ability to produce herbal medicine uh, that can create um, a lot of grit 30 when consumed. That create uh, is created every two days. So it will just so much increase the sustainability of your team um, besides him uh, seemingly uh, loving wheat and everything that has to do with it he's actually a really good character so i would say his ability are, is amongst the top abilities in the game uh, ranging uh, solidly in an a plus tier so i would say do not sleep on that character as well Wolf comes as an all-arounder, good stats, uh, decent marksmanship could be a little bit higher, but his real kicker is that all operations are done 33% faster. Now, if you really think about it uh, from a cost efficiency perspective with his 10,000, you can potentially be better off hiring someone else to teach. Uh, but if you are not looking uh, for the money or you're in a rush, then Wolf certainly is the right guy to do it. He can also be used as a very expensive deluxe uh, training tool for local uh, militia and with his actual faster teaching and more experience and good wisdom plus an, at least some score in leadership, he could fulfill that role decently well. The rest of the stats are great. He's also a good character. I would give him a B plus um, as a character uh, is definitely serviceable which brings us to ice potentially one of my favorite favorite characters not only due to the lines that he's spitting but also due to his stats the guy comes with phenomenal stats phenomenal marksmanship and on top of that they um, squeezed in some medical but the real kicker is the ice storm uh, ice uh, loves to take on enemies this the ice storm is five hits to all five different zones and if you pair that with a winchester or a sniper rifle uh, so single uh, shot um, rifles uh, with a quick scope he can take the head of a character and then kill a second character with the ice storm and therefore every single time he kills someone with a headshot uh, refreshing the ice storm again he's just a killing machine overall really good stats i would give him an a plus um, almost s tier rating he maybe has an s minus he definitely is that good blood good character very good character actually comes with his endless knife supply which is good for a host of reasons um, he's a very mobile character they cleverly uh, skilled into breach and clear because uh, the knives do not allow um, a pistol as a second uh, weapon don't be fooled by that they only allow offhand weapons so this here will give him further mobility you can throw a grenade um, and with his extended throwing uh, perk the first throw will be almost um, costless and then he uh, will uh, be able to do a free movement afterwards then you uh, use flying daggers in order to get up and personal to an enemy and then you can do whatever you want use a shotgun uh, or kill the enemies at heart's content so flying daggers are good the character is cheap i would recommend him he gets a solid a a minus rating 
and uh, could uh, even um, compete in a solo or dual mission. Which brings us to Meltdown, a character that has vengeance as uh, the ability. She gets inspired whenever uh, she uh, is being attacked and then attacks that character back. A uh, cool ability on paper, in reality it doesn't work that often. She comes, compared to the others, with mediocre stats, good marksmanship, and is a little bit tougher, so she's really a frontliner. Nothing per se wrong with her, 6,000 is a little bit of a steep price for what you are getting, so I would give her a B, B-. minus. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the heavy weapons uh, trade and the MB dexterity uh, trade also not that great. She could be a good character for two Glock 19 pistols if you j if you really want to play a character around that, but she's just not that efficient. Moving on to Buns, uh, a sniper with a few small problems. For starters, the anything you can go, accuracy bonus against targets that have been attacked by allies this turn. Really the way that uh, this game works isn't that great. Marksmen uh, oftentimes just solo kill enemies, there's nothing that happens beforehand, so this perk oftentimes just do, does nothing. Uh, she uh, can um, allow you for cheaper uh, conversations and she can uh, teach faster, but that comes with not a really great leadership. Granted her wisdom is fantastic and she can be a decent, um, even a good uh, teacher, but then again, what is she going to teach others, maybe other than marksmanship and dexterity, because the rest of her kit isn't that great. And that's where she falls down. I think she want, uh, the designers want to do too much in two different directions. She gets a C plus uh, and, and uh, good effort is put in, but uh, certainly not uh, the best character. Which brings us to Grunty, and as a fellow German, I have to say, Grunty, I loved you in the previous games. In this game, it's sort of a mixed bag. So let's start with the positives. Grunty has absolutely good, uh, okay uh, stats for the price point. He actually should have been in the recruit uh, tier because he nicely fits into that uh, tier. I don't know why he was put into the veteran tier. And for, for an all-arounder, he's a good character. Uh, his Überraschung uh, attack, which allows the closest enemy uh, to be hit uh, unless uh, when the combat starts, unless uh, it is a heavy weapon, is okay, but it never really uh, stole my heart. Uh, the heavy weapon setup, not so good, but he at least has really uh, good uh, defensive uh, skills, so that in itself is a good skilling. Uh, he comes with okay, not exceptional marksmanship, and a little bit of everything else. So the point is, I think Grunty can hold his own, and that's why he deserves kind of a uh, B- minus rating, definitely better than Buns for the price point, but none of uh, this here will make him uh, an exceptional character that goes above the B tier. Moving on to Elite. In the Elite tier we are being greeted by Ivan Dolvich, and Ivan Dolvich is a solid S tier character. Ivan is fantastic. Uh, you see Igor uh, is a nice little reference, he gain regains 3 AP after each kill. That in itself is fantastic, one of the few characters that I think will be able to solo the game on Mission Impossible difficulty just because you can chain kill enemies. He comes with really good abilities for a Kalashnikov uh, AK-74 um, fighting styles, he has phenomenal stats, he has phenomenal marksmanship, he has phenomenal additional stats, the only thing that isn't phenomenal is his price point. He should have been in the legendary uh, in the legendary tier. He is effectively better than many of the legendary uh, characters, and there is a reason why I would give him an S tier. Absolutely spot on, one of the best characters in the game. Vicky uh, follows him uh, with that. Uh, Vicky does have elbow grease, which automatically uh, repairs everything over time. Fantastic. Additionally, deals more chance with fully modified uh, firearms that also is very very good. The ambidexterant uh, trait not so great but she can throw further and um, she does have decent skills at the beginning so overall um, she comes also with a uh, locksmithing kit that never breaks which in itself is a great ability. She has okay physical stats but she has great marksmanship, phenomenal uh, mechanical uh, uh, abilities on top of it so overall she's just a really really good character and one that can immediately start fighting. I would give her an A simply because this is a great um, uh, quality of life trade. 
and will help her once you have fully modified weapons to just deal way more damage on top of it it is so good like the, these uh, two definitely uh, steal the cake for the uh, for the characters in the elite uh, tier Moving on to Raider, a bit of a character that you might be uh, sleeping on, but don't do that because Raider could uh, turn out to be a good character. So here's the thing. If you just look at uh, what he does is bonus accuracy against um, uh, enemies within the Overwatch area of an ally. Okay, that's fine. It's kind of a team player character. However, the reality is if you're overwatching with a character, more often than not, the enemies in that overwatch corner are already dead. They just don't know it yet. So the tech team, I wouldn't say is the best ability ever. It's actually relatively weak. But what is great is uh, lower prices um, and even better, this teaching um, perk. That combined with good wisdom and a phenomenal leadership uh, score makes him an absolute monster as a teacher. He also has good marksmanship. So what you can do with Ron Raider Higgins is you bring him in uh, and you just uh, teach everybody leadership, which will make everybody else a better teacher. And if you have high wisdom characters and they get a good leadership portion of Ron Raider Higgins, that means you can snowball your entire game with uh, teaching. Uh, teaching your team much 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 faster uh, and showing them the right direction on top of it he can of course teach uh, also marksmanship and a couple of the other uh, stats if needed but typically once you have taught your team everything about leadership they will just be a force to be reckoned with so for that um, particular uh, case alone i would give ron raider higgins a, a solid b other than that, the character would be underwhelming for the price point, but that particular uh, training piece makes him very, very good. Moving on to Tex, who can apply an Overwatch cone and then shoot everybody in their legs uh, to make them dance. He is a close quarter pistolero uh, focused character. On paper, all of that is nice until you realize that his wisdom is not so good and his dexterity and agility could be better. Um, and then you realize, oh gosh, uh, if you compare the stats with good old Ivan, uh, he has like 20 points less in almost all of the stats. So the character for the price point is not very good. I think this character uh, nerfed to about 6,000 lower level would be an actual good all-around character. He's most certainly not a marksman, and I would say for the price point, definitely rather a C-level character. This is okay, uh, but uh, pistols and Overwatch also don't go together that well. Which brings us to Nails. Nails is a fun character. Once he kills someone, he gets bloodthirst, so he deals more damage. And he starts with a little bit of cheating because he has Line Breaker um, and didn't have the prerequisites for it. Line Breaker allows uh, you to gain um, 4 AP in close quarter uh, combat. And he's potentially one of the characters that can really pull off a lot of shotgun based moves. Uh, so that in itself is good. As a psycho, he's great as well. He can make um, melee interrupt attacks, which is also uh, not too bad. So generally has a lot going on for himself. So that in itself, the, uh, the core is good. He has uh, decent strength. He has decent dexterity, both needed for melee combat. Not so great agility. Okay, um, marksmanship for the level that he's in. So he's an, a good character, solid B from my end. Dr. Huang, uh, one of the better doctors, has the unarmed uh, strike that uh, is going to disable enemies with unconsciousness, uh, improved accuracy in melee, and a couple of uh, melee focus skills. On top of that, great physical attributes and a good medical um, attribute. Not so good in marksmanship, but that's really not needed for him. So if you want to dedicate that uh, melee character this here is actually not too bad um, the one thing that I will say about exploding palm is listen if you do have a machete you're killing everything in one go to begin with so this is really not that needed and the strength could be a little bit higher so the character in itself works it, it does what it's supposed to do solid B tier Which brings us to red uh, red is a 
funny little old Scottish guy. And uh, he does have an ability that allows him, once activated, to retaliate with grenades uh, once he's hit uh, with the enemies. And this is just a lot to, uh, to, um, to put onto one ability as prerequisites. For starters, you don't want to get hit. Then, he only has 66 health, uh, so that's not great either. Then, um, you do not want to put him into the front line and then activate uh, that ability. Why not just kill the enemy uh, to begin with? Yes, he has 100 explosives, which is great. And yes, he has a good wisdom, so he can teach it to others. That is great as well. And yes, he even has decent marksmanship. But boy, oh boy, they botched on the uh, physical stats. And this here adds almost nothing to the character. 7,500 might be solidly in the middle of veteran. So I think he should be botched down. And in the veteran, uh, for the price point, he's actually okay. But he needs more training, specifically on the agility and health part. So he's an okay character, B minus. Hitman, uh, same category. His special ability is gain, he's, uh, gains focus each turn. Focus allows him to uh, gain grit at the end of the turn. And uh, as long as he doesn't change weapons, moves, or does anything else, he is actually an okay character. With 88 marksmanship, uh, that is great for a sniper. I'm not sure why they then gave him recoil management and only a strength of 70. So some of the things are just not adding up very well. Plus, he has selected three of the skills that are not necessarily going that well together and it's a little bit all over the place maybe because he has 40 dexterity and maybe because he has none of the stats over 80 to actually go into into a deeper territory so the character itself is a bit of a hot mess he has great uh, marksmanship but with the uh, dexterity he's not really doing that well so hitman hennessy i have to say uh, you're more a C, C minus tier character and I still need to see how to make you work. Maybe you guys have a good idea. Moving on to legendary tier. Fabulous. So legendary tier where you need the gold rating to begin with. Gold rating uh, you can either buy for I think 30,000 at the beginning of the game or later you get it for free because you're a valued customer. And even then you don't get everybody um, in uh, some of these characters do have preferences some of them uh, have a flat out 10 percent chance to not come at the beginning of the game so it's predetermined you will never get the characters and some of them uh, will require a minimum level of your character of your own character so that you can't just start uh, snowballing the game with them however once you get over all of those hurdles the characters are actually quite legendary in their own regards not all of them are equally legendary though let's start uh, with gus Gus is a specific case even for legendary characters because he's officially retired, which means um, you, in order to get him, you will need uh, to A, um, have a, substantially, a substantial team already going, and B, you will need to convince him uh, that your mercenaries and your cause is good enough. What that means in game uh, is your characters need to be high enough level, you need to have enough influence points and very similar to Spike, uh, you need to be able to convince him to actually join. However, once you do that, this character single-handedly is one of the best characters, solidly an S tier character. Um, the 36,000 uh, uh, 7 days fee are very well worth it. He comes with a whole slate of abilities, but potentially one uh, that needs to be pointed out is Tango Down. Whenever he kills someone, everybody in the team, and I mean everybody, so if you go in with uh, 12 mercs on difficult missions, that means 11 other characters plus himself would gain, uh, gain 10 grit. Uh, if you pair that with um, multiple kills, that, uh, that would be great. He has just phenomenal stats all around. The only thing that's low is agility and health. He has the old dog trait, so he cannot increase the stats naturally from training operations, but he still gets XP in combat and he can read magazines. If you camp the magazine vendor, you can very much get him to a very solid health and agility ratio, and the rest um, is fine as is. He is uh, becoming inspired when there are no teammates in his proximity, so make him a sniper and you're golden. And then he has a lot of great abilities, inspiring strike for instance, trickshot isn't bad either, extra hit points, overwatch, flanker, recoil management, great, great, great. He's just a great character. 
could talk on and on. He's a good character. Uh, Magic uh, is another great character, A plus tier, maybe even S tier. Great physical stats, great marksmanship, has the ability of a 50% crit chance when attacking from high ground. So the moment that you uh, get that and you stack other crit chance, he almost always crits. That means you can use something like Lucky Strike with him very frequently uh, to give him inspired and then uh, mm, snowball it from here. Fantastic character, I would even say S minus uh, tier. Scully, great character as well. Shoulder to shoulder allows two characters to gain 15 uh, grits. If you put another one next to him, that's even three characters that gain 15 grit. Combine that with uh, the uh, Vanguard ability and you gain 30 grit for a whole host of characters. Great stats on top of it, so definitely an A tier character. Moving on to Reaper, which is a character that focuses all around the Grim Face, range attack that automatically causes a crit, and then nearby enemies will suffer panic. So that's the better version um, of uh, the Dire Warning, uh, which only has a 15% chance that always happens, but with Grim Fate you can ensure that it happens. Great marksmanship, great physical stats. And he's also a bit of a loner, so if you uh, leave him alone with his stealthy perk together, he will be able to just uh, take down enemies. He's a great character, um, and I would uh, also rate him in A tier, just like many of uh, the legendary characters. Which brings us to Sydney. Sydney is a bit of an uh, oddball. He gets smug because Sydney is a smart character uh, increases the maximum uh, action points than damage um, but it is lost after he himself takes damage or is missing with an attack now luckily for good old uh, smug face sydney this doesn't happen that often so it's actually quote unquote always on in the very late game specifically if you're stealthing the problem for Sydney, however, is he has low uh, hit points and agility, so he and and low strengths, uh, so he needs a lot of training for a legendary character, which is the whole reason why I would give him a uh, rather B tier. Uh, for someone who comes with twenty six thousand per uh, per day, the character actually should be a bit uh, better. The stats are a, a bit too low. Shadow, great character, fantastic character to be precise. He can sneak while standing and gains 10 grit on a successful stealth kill. Um, that in itself is great. He's like the uh, legendary glass cannon character. And with, with that ability plus better stealth uh, kills and yet another loner character, he's actually doing quite well. Lightning reactions will keep him alive. G great sets all around, great marksmanship. The prototype of a stealth sniper in my humble opinion. So he gets an A+. The reason why I don't give him an S tier rating is he uh, has skilled a couple of uh, things like hit and run, which really don't fit him that well, um, uh, which I potentially wouldn't have taken. If you do have a mod that can uh, sk uh, skill differently, that's fine. But he's a good character. Scope, uh, a marksman with the ability uh, to reduce the pin down, uh, mm, uh, talent, uh, the pin down shot to just one AP and then apply exposed to a target. It's actually not bad with a quick scope. You can kill someone, then take another shot and kill someone and have one AP left over. You can use that in order to expose a third target. That uh, together with high ground and night ops is good. Her stats, however, suck for a character of uh, that uh, level and for 20,000. I really don't take a lot of excuses here. Com uh, compare that to Igor and you will see a uh, day and night difference. And Eagle Eye is really not that good of an ability. It's okay ability, but compare that with uh, magic uh, with magic here, who, who could be a better sniper, or with Shadow, who could be a better sniper. She really is pale in comparison, so B tier for her. Forda, an old but friendly woman uh, that gains uh, 8 grit whenever hitting multiple enemies, likes to wear heavy armor, likes to uh, use breach and clear, but has is all around with her stats. So on the one hand uh, she has ironclad, on the other hand she has increased fast runner. So what is it? Do you want uh, to wear heavy armor or do you want to wear light armor? Uh, please make up your mind. Then she has a couple of other um, uh, things that are really all over the place and you ask yourself why is that and 
you then compare it with uh, and, and, and see that she has old dog uh, which prevents her from naturally increasing and you can see she really has a very low accurate uh, dexterity and the other stats aren't great either compare that with Gus who is absolutely phenomenal here just needs a little bit help you don't uh, see the same level of awesomeness in Forda Yes, grit is fine with the grenades, that's okay, but you can grit again grit on other uh, means and grit also st uh, uh, stacks only up to 30 and then that's it. So there is not really that much she would get out of it. Plus, she doesn't have the extra hit points that, the, uh, that for instance, Gus comes uh, with. So she, per definition, is uh, less, uh, less beefy. And for 17,000, I have absolutely no uh, sympathy for what I'm seeing here. So that gets a C tier rating, which brings us to Corporal Dan Anderson, uh, the last character here. All teammates um, attack a target that they can see and have a clear line of fire. That's great. He's also an older guy, but he has awesome stats. That's the difference. He uh, teaches faster, but the problem with the older guys that are higher level is they've given them so many base abilities that sort of do not necessarily fit together. Um, Len Anderson here has a couple that are good flanking and crit in particular i uh, value lightning reactions also highly but then he has a couple that aren't that great so he's okay with leadership but really when you want to do the leadership training i already mentioned um, that that can be done much more efficiently if you go uh, with raider higher leadership a better teacher overall so len gets a c tier as well um, not the best character for the price tag uh, that uh, that he is um, asking for are you disagreeing with any of uh, my assessments if so let me know why and i hope this is helpful for you in your mercenary selection take care and have a good one bye bye